It's really sick. And then with a little like some saturation. Hello, welcome to another episode of Mothership Gear. Today, we have my good friend, Zach Esposito, bass player, touring in the studio. You brought multiple basses to the studio today, so you will be seeing several episodes of our good friend, Zach. Um, so the first bass that Zach and I are breaking down right now is the 1970 Fender Precision bass. And this one does not go on tour, right? This no. is a studio bass. Mm -hmm. So Zach, tell us why did you buy this 1970 Fender Precision bass? Mm. It's because I was no good at guitar. <laughs> 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 I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I don't know how to speak any other language. So I was like, I gotta learn how to play music. Uh, I, it doesn't make any sense, but it's, just <laughs> let that one roll. Uh, <laughs> uh, I bought it because I I had borrowed a bass um, from I borrowed a bass from a friend for a few years, and it was like this really cool old That's vintage right. jazz bass. Remember that? We one? all fell in love with it, dude. I fell in love with that thing, <laughs> and I just he let me borrow it for so long. And how long? It was like like four years. Four probably. years. Yeah. And, it's like uh, getting attached to a dog yeah, that you can't keep. Uh huh. It was like fostering a pet. Is yeah. what that felt like. And yeah. then I, he ended up asking for it back. And then it was like the '66 jazz bass that I really liked. Um, so I played around with um, some people. Let me borrow some basses, which was really nice. But then I never owned like a a bass that I really kind of fell in love with again for a while. So then I ended up coming across over code. Fit, I think I came across uh, this bass on Instagram from a place called Future Music, which is a music store in Highland Park. And what kind of? Oh wait, 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 wait! Is it the one that has repairs as well? Yeah. Okay, I've I been think inside. so. Yeah, yeah. It's like right on York, and like yeah. they and um, they were posting this bass not to like sell, but they were. I think they were just posting it to like demo. He was demoing what flat wound strings sounded like and uh and then i just like hit him up and was like hey uh is this for sale and he's like yeah you can come buy it and i just got it and are you allowed to say what you got it for i'd rather not okay <laughs> only because well, i googled people would be upset i googled <laughs> his base okay if you guys are curious type in 1970 fender precision bass it's pretty, it's, it's, it's since I've gotten it, which is, I guess, now four years ago, it's gone up, like, dramatically. And that's like, why this doesn't go on the road. Yeah. No, yeah, it doesn't go on the road. And it's also, like, one of, it's close to, like, the year of a bass that I really would want, which would be somewhere between a 62 and a 64, 60, you know, those are crazy expensive, too, now, um, and have been. But, like, I, this is... Uh, I've wanted I've wanted an old P bass for a long time with flat ones on it, and this just like I played it and just fell in love with it, and it has just like such a cool feel to it. And yeah, it's show all us this, like, what it sounds like because yeah. you were demoing it, and I asked you, I was like, S give us that vibe when we're rolling. Yeah, so this is it. Uh, this is what it sounds like right now, just kind of by itself. really sick and then with a little like some saturation
Dope. Kind of like that. Yeah, it takes um, like distortion and overdrive really well. It does. Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't get too out of control, but it is so it lets you really dig in, which yeah, is nice. Yeah, totally. And it's cool because I love how like subtle you can be with it, and like the top end of it is really nice. It's got that Motown feel still, yeah. and it's still got that vintage like punchy you know, Fender six, you know, whatever. Um, but it's yeah. I love it. it. Records really well too. Now to kind of work your credits in, because I didn't really tell them what you do. What are some projects that you've played this bass on? That's a good question. I've done this one with uh, recording more so with my friend Jackson Wooten. Uh, Jackson Wooten. What kind of music? Of, it's like uh, kind of folk rock kind of vibe i would say so kind more of like laid branching back out. is that why you reached for it, this one because it's, it's more laid back yeah or? it's really good for like i don't know like it's very good for kind of the the support in like a song if you're not trying to be too pronounced or anything but like also has a lot of character to it still that's like very colorful and uh got a lot of resonance on it and i feel like uh, I don't know. I, I like to use this if I'm trying to be, uh, yeah, I guess it's more supportive and more like grounded in a, in a song, but he also, he, his music tends to be pretty expanded and broad and it kind of goes everywhere, you know? And I think that, uh, this has the ability to do that stuff too. And I think it, it's very versatile in that way, which I like. And I love the way it looks. Yeah, me it's too. It's so sick. I know. It's funny because like I, when I got it, it, it had none of this none of this was on it so you actually it. relicked it yourself yeah, I without took, like just playing i i guess so i don't really know what i did i don't know if the paint was just kind of in a place where it just started to wear off or something when i got it but it it's funny i've like dropped it on my pedal board and it's got like some crazy gashes now and i'm pretty sure it used to be a, used as a lefty because there's all these holes all over it that i think people used to put straps on that is wild. So I don't know where they come from or anything. There's like one here for like a thumb rest and all this stuff. So it's it's kind of janky, but I really like it. So yeah, it's well, it's, it's got some history. Stunning guitar. So uh, for those of you who are curious, I Zach and I were trying to find specs on these instruments that he brought today. So I found a listing by Retrofret, um, and they seem to be describing something really close to his serial number, and they call it a three color sunburst. Um, a little less bright than the 66, 68 era. Um, and then they, they say that it's just an old school P bass, uh, with a Chrome bridge. Does yours have a Chrome bridge? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and pickup covers. Do you, does, did yours ever come with pickup covers? Yeah. He didn't have them on when I bought and it. And then, um, let's see. Finger rest. Does yours have a finger rest? Uh, it does. I actually put this one on, uh, but it, it, it had the holes for it, but I don't think it had the original. Um, and then they describe it as, let's see if they mention the uh, the type of wood, the neck. So alder body and maple neck with rosewood fingerboard. That sounds right. I couldn't tell you. Yeah. It feels right. Well. I know alder when I feel it. And, it and feel this like feels alder? like alder to me. Yeah. What is alder Do, viewed am, as? Is oh. it like... Is it pristine wood? Is it sturdy wood? Is it vintage wood? Because I've we've had a couple Alder guitars. Is it the uh -huh. most common? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. It's the I, wood that I think comes it up is the most. Yeah, when I, I when I'm trying to build a guitar on Fender, that is the default. So I okay. feel like it's probably it's probably yeah. I would say so. Let me know in the comments if that's not true. <laughs> yeah. Um, pedal board, I want to save for the other bass because that's what okay. you take on the road with you. Yeah. Is there any pedals on here that you specifically make sure you bring to the studio on this board? We'll use this Ooh. as the studio. Bass. Yeah. Uh, okay. So usually in the studio, I want to use, I don't have a ton of pedals here with me, but I want to use, I'll do like a clean channel and then I'll do a dirty, like kind of affected channel and... I don't end up doing a lot of drive um, because I can do that in post. But if I do use studio stuff, I'll use either like an octave. Or I'll use like a, uh, I've been using the chorus a lot, but. Which chorus are you using? 
It's a uh, GC Electronic Corona course. What made you pick out that course? Because in our Discord, which we do have a Discord server, um, one of our friends who I don't think you've met, Z, he was looking for a course and a oh. vibrato, or Paul was. Um, but I've realized that choruses are, they could be too watery sometimes. They could be yeah. too fluttery. They could be... Um, I know Brandon Burr is also looking for a specific course. So this one is the Corona. Yeah. Do you recommend it? I love this one. I tried out a bunch of courses when I was buying one. Uh, and the reason I got this one is I found out about Tim Lefebvre, who is a bass player who played with David Bowie and stuff, um, and a bunch of other people, but he uses it. And so I tried it, it after trying a bunch of, you know, I tried the Boss one and I tried a bunch of them and they all sounded really good. This one had kind of most of what I was hearing in my head. And mm. so I kind of went with that because it, it just kind of emulated what I wanted. And it also doesn't cut any low end or anything like that, oh, which I really yeah, cool. like. So it feels like I'm not losing anything when I turn it on, whereas a lot of other ones just kind of, you know, it, it would taper off and I feel like I would have a thinner sound. So I like it a lot. It's like probably my favorite pedal I use. And then uh, I don't think we said what kind of op octaver you use. I use the, that's like the uh, the Boss OC2, which is the one that has been, you know, I think Pino mm. made it famous in the 80s or something. He used to use it on records. So if you were recording and, and you wanted that, you would send that through the dirty chain and then yeah. clean, you would get the root. No. Yeah. Clean, I would have like a, yeah, the, I have it set to his settings, which is the low octave all the way up and no dry signal so you just get that subby and with the chorus too it's cool it's what did you just put on right now uh 10 years and pedal. what does that do it's kind of like a saturation pedal mm. kind of adds like overdrive mids, like boost the mid so you yeah. can hear the the note more yeah it's kind of like doing like a little bit of dirt but not too much where did you get your strap from Soldier, soldier uh, straps. It's dope. Is that the strap called? you use live? Yeah, I like buy all their, my straps from them because I just love the lock. Do you have lock straps on all of your bases? Yeah, these are just like the Fender lock straps that you get from like Amazon. And how? Thank you, Jeff. How heavy does your bass get live in a set? Like, how long are you guys playing to where you're like holding the bass? It's like. <laughs> For the thing I'm doing right now, it's like an hour and a half, and so oh, that's long. Yeah, it's about ninety minutes or so. Does it? But does the strap feel comfortable through the whole? It set? does, which is crazy. These are like guitar straps. They're not even. I don't like the big chunky bass straps. Yeah. I feel like they're just I, I'm too not, much of a vibe. statement. Too many. Yeah, just too many eyes on my shoulder. <laughs> and so, yeah, it can mess with the vibe of the outfit too. Uh -huh, exactly. I mean, I'm trying to you know you wear my Gucci that I get for free. You know, all the time, every show, uh, and. No, but I uh, I feel like the yeah they honestly it does good like it does a pretty good job of not making my shoulders too tired. It's like made out of seatbelt material, um, so they just repurpose seatbelts and then put all these fun little oh shoot I fabrics didn't know on that. it. Yeah, that's cool. It's a really good vibe. Well, if you guys enjoyed this episode, please subscribe because we have more with my friend Zach Esposito. We will talk about a 1979 Guild B301 fretless and a PB57 1985 Fender Precision bass made in Fuji Gen, yep. Japan. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Zach. Um, catch Zach on tour, maybe. If they want yeah. to see you live, where, where do they go see you? Um, right now, I mean, I'm playing with a bunch of friends in LA or I'm playing with uh, this artist, Delwater Gap, right now. And you can find him. He's a good guy. How do they find you? Are you on social media? Yeah, social media, Zach Esposito on Instagram. That's okay. Kind of, and my email. And my home address is... Cut. <laughs> <laughs> that's where we're gonna cut right it's gonna be right there yeah yeah totally. yeah totally okay totally. cool the, none of this is gonna be part of it right like none we're done okay thank god okay mo <laughs> could you check my hair again please <laughs> <laughs> and we will see you guys later <laughs> bye <laughs>